Hi, good morning. Welcome to TWR Facebook Live. Um, so uh, this morning, uh, uh, I would like to start with uh, meditation. So as we all know, this is a continuation of uh, the teaching and uh, we are doing two different things. Um, so the one working with the pain, so this is a part four, uh, healing meditation, I said the healing pain through meditation part four, and then uh, the fourth wisdom, wisdom of discriminating wisdom, so this teaching and meditation together. We have been doing these two sessions separately. We were doing meditation first, and the pain, and then uh, we have been doing the teaching on uh, discriminating, I said the wisdom. So today we are not going to separate. I think it did not doesn't make much sense to separate two different things. I will just stay in one session. We'll do only one session, and we will just uh, combine both. And so, first of all, how how all of you are doing? How are you doing? How you, how's your practice going? Hi. How's your formal practices doing? How is your informal practices doing? Uh, how is your physical pain is healing or not healing? Uh, personally, uh, my pain on the shoulder, it's almost gone. I do feel much, much more clear. And uh, so uh, for sure it's helping me. Yeah, so um, so basically uh, one of the idea here is in the Cyber Sangha is we, to, to do this uh, weekly base meditation, working on our pain, is its idea is to support each other to, so that we can all um, support each other to practice. And um, so also that uh, when we work on a pain through our meditation, it's not only about pain, it's not only about clearing pain and working with pain and pain management, but the tool that you're using is the meditation. You are also uh, increasing the development and familiarity of meditation itself. So the principles of the the, uh, the meditation and the experiences of the meditation, familiarity of the meditation, uh, feeling that more supported by each other. So that's really the ultimate purpose is that the pain happened to be like a pathway, the reason kind of invitation to do it. So 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 hope both as far as a, a healing the pain is concerned and also as far as a development of your own uh, meditation is concerned, I hope both are doing well. Okay, so so let's start with the meditation. So we will we'll do the same. Those you know, not, uh, nine breathing or purification. I will do the nine breathing or purification. And those you don't know, nine breathing or purification, then you will just just take a sense of deep breathing. So uh, just take a deep, maybe like a, almost like a twice long breath. You breathe in very, very deep and uh, and feel that breath is reaching in the areas of the body usually it does not reach like going all the way down below the navel and uh, and all the way different parts of the organ deep in different parts of the organ so breathe in very deep and breathe out and as you breathe out imagine and feel that you are breathing out all the discomforts that you are witnessing and experiencing this moment, which do represents your other discomforts, deeper discomforts, uh, your long-term discomfort, they are all kind of inter interconnected with each other. So just feel you're releasing them. 
and then I will uh, guide the meditation. Imagine and feel through this nine breathing or purification, through these deep breathings that you clear all obstacles and obscurations. And particularly feel that three channels are more open, more less in that central channel. Feel that that sacred space in your center of your body, it's illuminated with light. In that sacred space, with that pure light of awareness, rest deep. Be aware of the stillness in your body. Be aware of the silence in your speech. Be aware of the spaciousness in your heart. For a moment, let go of everything. Be fully present here and now with the Cyber Sangha. Feel that we are all connected through this sacred cyberspace. resting in this collective sacred space of our heart and the mind. 
We are all supporting each other. Feel that you are supported by everyone and also give your sense of support to everyone. If you're aware of this connection, the connection is there and connection is helping you. You have intent to open your heart. You are opening your heart and openness of your heart is helping others. Rest your body in the stillness, rest your speech in the silence, rest your mind in that spaciousness. And gradually bring your attention to the physical area where you are, you don't feel at all or you feel blocked or you feel pain, or if you are sick, or you feel discomfort, bring your full open attention there, which means sense of care, love, non-judgmental, like a mother who brings the clear and open and loving attention toward the child who is in pain. Your awareness is that mother, that pain is the child who is experiencing pain. What we call spaciousness. Luminosity or the awareness of connection. When you are aware of that pain, you are connected to that pain and connection is healing. As disconnection produces pain. And then the warmth, when you are open, when you are connected, there is a warmth, there is a sense of care. That warmth, it's like a medicine. And bring that warmth in the center of that pain And allow it to heal, not elaborate, just bring the awareness of that warmth in the center of that pain and rest. The images are like, as we usually use, giving a spacious, luminous, warm hug, if that image works, or bringing the loving mother's attention to the pain the experiencing child if that works. It also, you can just bring that spacious, luminous awareness in the center of that pain. Either of these images, whatever is working, use that. And just simply continue that awareness there as we Listen, or you can also sing if you want, the, the mantra of clear light, the salivu.
for a moment continuously rest in that location and feel the response from that location like a child when child gets the loving warm attention from the mother child responds to that your body is responding to awareness your body is responding to that particular awareness which is non-judgmental like a open like a wisdom of emptiness be aware like your body is responding to that mirror like wisdom be aware that body is responding or that pain is responding to that warmth or that inner alchemy, inner medicine. It's like a medicine. So be aware of that respond to that wisdom, to that awareness. Allow the to awareness to heal. Allow to heal through that connection. Okay, now you can uh, open your eye. Okay, so uh, how was the meditation? How you are feeling, how everybody is feeling? And uh, as you can see, uh, Mariela has uh, posted a uh, link there for for explanation of the mantra and also uh, I don't know if we have posted there already or not but the 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 audio uh, chanting of the mantra so that those you want those you are not familiar with this um, mantra of clear light salivu uh, you are welcome to download them on your phone and uh, look at the text explanation so that you understand uh, the meaning the deep meaning of this uh, mantra uh, and uh, so you will when you sing it will they will make more sense and also you know since we have introduced this uh, mantra now for about a few years and all around the world uh, many uh, people are uh, engaging this, with this mantra and singing. So I think uh, um, you, you know, it would be nice every time when we are doing a meditation on a regular basis, we are always using this mantra. This is, I personally feel that this mantra uh, helps. Generally, every mantra is wonderful that focus and, uh, and particularly mantras which is uh, related with uh, uh, the essential teaching, the teaching of Dzogchen. And uh, there is direct connection, so I think they're very, very helpful. And uh, when definitely when you're using and singing the prayer, it calms your mind, it brings you in a deep place. So basically, 
mantra is bringing you to that place without you putting too much effort trying to get there so so that sense of effortless invitation to to inner uh, silence okay so and the last time last week when i was explaining a little bit so i hope some of you uh, have uh, maybe some of you are listening first time here maybe you don't know but i just wanted to say a few few words about this i did explain last week our relationship to the pain so basically um pain is a production of ignorance and three root poisons and our behaviors and our uh, lack of skill of all or lack of power to process conflicts emotions stress tensions and that is really what it is and so uh, so basically if we have produced it we can also produce less we can not produce we can reverse the situation so that is i think that is something that we need to trust in ourselves that is not to think about that you come with a certain amount of pain in your life and you have no choices you have to live through them you have to suffer it you have no uh, we produce them we have also chance to not produce them we have uh, or produce less or or produce better or produce shorter so uh, so we trusting that you do have some sense of uh, power to heal and power to stop and power to guide i think that is very very important to trust on yourself and general attitude once there is a pain i think it's not to look the pain always in something wrong with the pain because um whatever it is it's it's called conventional truth every single experience every single appearances every single matter is nothing wrong about it it has its purpose it has purpose to manifest in particular time in space in in a way it it manifests because that's called conventional truth kunjab demba we say and um, and we create those situation but when something is not manifesting there is also not need to, to manifest because the the source from where it manifests is beyond this manifestation what we call ultimate truth the boundless truth boundless space or the source so either you remain in the source or lack of connection to the source whatever manifests we it nothing wrong about any of this manifestation is simply allow to exhaust and process as best you, you can more you see it wrong bad something failure something trying to ignore suppress control manipulate um and if you do any of these things that is not a right approach to see to know to process the conventional truth or our 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 inner experiences that's not the way to um to deal with our inner experiences our inner experiences are there's a value and it's access is a door for our own inner development so that's not the way to do it so so some sense of i think is the attitude toward our pain and sickness should be right like um in i as i was t- t- talking last week in tibetan tradition sometimes we say uh, it's my lay it's my karma okay so some sense of people say those things it's my karma um what does that mean there is some sense saying i accept it it's something that maybe i have i have previously i have had some actions conditions that i have created causes that i have created i am as a result of that these fruition fruition i came to exist and now they are clearing exhausting they are exhausting themselves by manifesting it so it's my karma i accept rather than saying why me why now why not to others that these are not not right i don't think is the right kind of approach to 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 look at it and it's also just simply is does not help to help to not have help it does not help to 
uh, heal, it does not help to stop. So it's helpless, uh, helpless, hopeless uh, attitude toward the pain. Uh, and also sometime when people do feel sickness and pain, you can also think, may this heal others pain, may this heal my other pain, may this purify my karma, uh, so that some sense of, which is, which is what's happening actually, that process of uh, going through it, it is in a way, it's as a purification, uh, as as a process, processing it, it's clearing it, it's exhausting its karma, and it's something good is happening in the process, so you able to see what it is in that way, then you have right relation, and there's more healing in, in that process. So seeing like that. And also sometime in the teachings, it's also talk about these energies are like a, simply a manifestation. We say they're, they're like a cell. Uh, uh, they are like a dynamic energy. They are a manifestation of the source, or from the source. Or if them, they are your manifestations. So uh, that nothing wrong about them. Uh, of course, our unable to handle it, deal with it. We have we struggle with it. We're trying to do our best, but not just trying to be a little bit more aware of negative judgment toward the pain or toward sickness. Do you think when you, when your knee is hurting, when you when you begin to hate the pain, and gradually you begin to hate the knee? gradually you begin to hate who is experiencing it, gradually you begin to hate everybody. Do you think knee likes it? No. Do you think the pain likes it? No. Do, do you think the subject who is experiencing the pain likes it? No. No one likes to be judged. Do you like to be judged? Do you know anybody like to be judged? No. Everybody like to allow the experiences and allow to breathe allowed to be free and allowed to allow to express we love that and not judge judge uh, as you express it and sometime even even goes to the really like in a deep sense that these pain are simply a manifestation of yourself like from a manifestation of source so so it, it is like a source it is like that truth the, so the, the basically like a conventional truth is like an ultimate truth. Like the forms are matter. Every experiences of consciousness is the awareness. Uh, so there, there can be many different philosophical approach to understand differently. But I, I think maybe we don't need to go into all these uh, complex ideas. But I think the uh, main thing is in, a, in their simple way, what understanding will benefit us. I think we just need to, I think it's good to just stay there. Yeah, so basically, when we have a negative view, we think about like judging the pain, judging ourselves, judging cause conditions. We think it's an obstacle. We think it's, it's a punishment. We think uh, it's only a unique self-punishment, punishment to yourself, uh, so, uh, and it doesn't cause, it doesn't invite you to recognize yourself, the pain, pain, pain you identify with the pain, you, be, you become uh, in sense of pain identity, and not only that, you get stuck in that pain identity, so these are not just right approach and right relationship to the pain. So, so that is, I think, just simply, just a little explanation of what pain is, how we relate to the pain. So we continue with the idea of um, the fourth wisdom, the wisdom of discriminating wisdom. As I mentioned uh, before that, you know, these uh, five wisdom traditions that I think in all the Tibetan Buddhist schools, including Bern, there, there is a, uh, explanation in every tradition from Nyingma, Kaju, Gelu, Sakya, 
Chonang and the Burn, Burn tradition and all at all schools, major schools, have these uh, ex different explanations about the five wisdom, and uh, and and some some of them, uh, these explanations are more based on a sutric approach, and that in in the sutric approach, these uh, um, discriminate, discriminating wisdom are most explained as a uh, qualities of enlightened beings, a Buddha. Uh, so qualities of enlightened being, uh, that means they are not necessarily uh, uh, ordinary people do not have it or do not have the access to it. And so more like a higher tantra and more like a great, perf the path of great perfection, Dzogchen teachings, it says that these five wisdoms are also that abides within every sentient being, with all of us, in you, in me. It is a matter of recognizing these wisdoms. Uh, they are, in the end, they are only one single wisdom. They are not f f different wisdoms. We say like a single sphere of light, single awareness, or single taste, uh, uh, one taste, so they, they are mentions like that. So, so, so far we have explained uh, wisdom of emptiness, mirror-like wisdom, uh, uh, wisdom of equanimity. And so now we are, this is a discussion about um, discriminating wisdom here. So discriminating wisdom, basically, generally speaking, with discriminating wisdom is something that we are able to dis, uh, dis, make distinctions well see things more clearly, not mixing up things. Um, let's maybe just let's give one very simple example. Uh, let's live very fancy explanation of five wisdom and let's talk about a very simple aspect of that in our everyday life will be, you know, like um, in our life, um, who think about who, who are you, who am I? Uh, and in the true sense of who am I, it's clearly I am known of what I do. I am not who, what I do. I am not what I think. Uh, I am not my roles. My, I am not my even moral roles. Like a, I'm not just a husband. I'm not just a father. I'm not just a teacher. Uh, I am not just this Tibetan, I am not this and that. Everything that I identify with, I'm not only that, but I can, I'm, I'm, I am manifesting that. So the, my manifestation is infinite possibility, but who truly I am is I am none of those conditions. So, so in a way, there's a con contradiction between I am no one and I am everyone. I am no one and I can be everyone. So, so far, who you are, the, what you identify, is our limitations. But limitation, these limitation has specific role in the society, function, responsibility, moral sense of responsibility. We have certain responsibility in order to serve well others, in order to play well these roles out. It's always better to be no one than stuck with one role, conditioned by one role. So somebody who is like a, so much identify as a father might have a difficult uh, being a good husband. Or if it's somebody who's identified too much as a teacher or too much, too much as a lawyer, then maybe you might have a difficulty being with a good husband or something like that, because then you might immediately look through from everything from legal point of view, everything you're trying to, or you're trying to teach everybody all this role of teacher. So, but that doesn't work. So some sense, what I'm saying is you, what your conventional role, you, you are not able to pay, it, pay well because you have more lack of connection to that no oneness that spaciousness, that I am no one, 
that dharma datu or the wisdom of emptiness that awareness or wisdom of emptiness that i am no one i am no one it's a very powerful but but when you feel no one then sometimes people feel no one too much they feel conditioned by feeling no one they get they fell into nihilism they fell into denial so they 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 get they get into sense of de depression uh, they uh, not feeling uh, purpose uh, feeling lost or the other way around so then sometimes they when they feel that they are someone like they feel their role like particularly like a professional role so sometimes so much there are people so much like a workaholic they identify so much with their work and they are lawyer they are they are like a miserable lawyer that who is having problem with everybody that because they are, they cannot see a goodness and thing they always see problem in the situation potential problem in the situation potential conflict of course i understand that is the lawyer's job to see avoid potential problems but sometime you have to able to see the goodness in the situation too like you have to trust the situation so if you are not able to you become one or the other you're not able to be, play the role of both so then it's a problem it's like a you fell into one or the other so discriminating wisdom means that you are able to play both equally fully without interfering each other that is like a sense of discriminating wisdom so you are in essence wisdom of emptiness wisdom mirror like wisdom 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 of equanimity mirror, uh, discriminating wisdom all accomplish all accomplishing wisdom all five wisdoms in 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 essence they are one but in appearances they are separate so this in appearance in essence they don't contradict each other they are discriminating i said they are distinctively clear and that there, there's no confusion uh these two polarity in some sense so that is um some sense of like a disc, disc, what is known as a discriminating wisdom in shangji ninju he says nyamla mande sosur chebe sosur to be she they are one they are a wisdom of equanimity equipoise but at the same time they are separate so they are one at the same time they are separate so that oneness and distinctiveness a unique quality of each other should do not need to, to contradict in higher awareness so that that is uh, i think maybe a, a simple ex, simplest explanation explanation i could do this morning maybe uh, maybe in the future might be hopefully can do better but uh, for now i think that's that's all i can say um yeah so i hope this is making sense how so how everybody is doing that's wonderful another it says pyeon tamje cheda rangi chini sosur chimbi he so uh, in the, in the sutric uh, the wisdom of discriminating wisdom will be that the buddha the omniscient the omniscient which sees all the phenomena uh, the qualities uh, the meanings and defin definitions of all the phenomena able to see distinctively clear not getting mixed i think that is uh, omniscient that omniscient is called um discriminating wisdom in in the buddhas in the enlightened beings 
So I, I'm not sure that is making any sense to you all or not, but uh, um, that is what in the sutric explanation. Uh, but in an or very ordinary sense, I think I, as I said earlier that you know not get stuck in one thing. You know, you are you are father, you are our mother, you are sister, you are brother, you are you are you are everything fully. And one no one full role have to interfere with another full role. And no no all the full role has to interfere with the source of spaciousness. So that basically means that in a sense that every moment, I think that is it's a very uh, humbling, uh, um, humbling quality to have is that every moment in a way feeling that I am no one. You know, sometimes uh, it's just basically we identify with something. I just, the other day, I just recognized something. Maybe this is a personal experience that I will share that I was... Uh, um, flying uh, back from Europe last week and uh, so uh, a friend, a student of mine came to pick me up at the airport and a um, little late, so half an hour late, so which is fine. But uh, for me, generally, I when I'm traveling um, hours and hours and hours, so sometimes I feel that how long time it takes an aeroplane if it's 11 hour, 12 hour flight, I have no control about it. If something goes with the mechanic weather, I have no control over it. At least that's my perception that I don't have a control over it. But when I arrive, somebody to pick me up, do I do have some control over it. We all we have control over it. So waiting is not necessary. This is my logic, my pain creating logic. And uh, so I told my students, say, oh, please pick, pick me up. Usually uh, next time, just come a little bit earlier so I don't have to wait after a long flight. And uh, then, uh, then I said that, of course, uh, my students, she, it's, he said, yes, of course, I'll, next time I'll be in time. Uh, I'm sorry. And uh, then I, I reflect again what I just said to him. And then I, I reflect that in myself. I said, where does this come from? You know, where does this come from? Idea of that I, as Tenzin Wangjal, have little problem of waiting at the airport when I arrive. Where does this come from? Why it's so serious matter? Or why it has to be a serious matter? And then I realized maybe this has been some time I've been thinking that way. Maybe, not, maybe 10, 15 years ago, sometime, Maybe I was very tired at the airport and somebody came pick, came, came pick me up late and then I said, okay, you know, got a little mad and so on. And then um, I decided that I do not like to, to wait at the airport. And so I told myself maybe many years ago, I do not like to wait at the airport when I arrive after a long flight. Then I said, I just... I conditioned myself to be to think that way and feel that way. I said that's not but not okay, and why not? Why not? It's okay to wait half an hour. It's okay to wait at the airport, uh, even that, regardless of how long you have been flying, regardless of what your stories at the airport and other side, other countries you went, went through. So those all those stories doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's you have created those conditions. You have made believe yourself that, that this is what you don't like. I can change that. I can, I can say, I do not have a problem waiting at the airport. So then I, that realization, I decided to say that I do not have a problem waiting at the airport now on. So, 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 yeah, so I changed. I, I shared with my wife. I just told her, I said, okay, well, you know, this is what happened. I told my student and uh, and I reflected on it and I realized that now I decided that I do not have a problem waiting at the airport anymore in the future. So those you are coming to pick me up, you are free. Come late as <laughs> come late if you wanted to. Okay, so that's all. I mean, what I'm trying to, sh why I'm sharing this experience is just basically Whatever you think you have created, and if you have created, you can change it. And 
and something is not working, better to change it than making producing more pain in yourself and others. That's all. Thank you. So I'll see you next time.